All right, so imagine you're driving down the road, you're on the freeway, you're going the speed limit, everything's fine, you know? And the whole time you're driving, you're asking yourself, you're asking your passengers, are we there yet? Not in the cliche way that there's all the jokes about a family vacation, you know, the kids are asking, are we there yet? No, 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 no. You're thinking, I gotta get there faster. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we aren't at the destination yet. Are, are we there? We gotta go. We gotta get to the place that we're driving to. We gotta go right now. Every half hour or so, you pull the car over, you check the tires, make sure that the air levels are right, you pop the hood, make sure the engine's doing well. Do you have enough gas? Should we get enough gas? Should we uh, maybe stop at the gas station soon? Okay, well, you know what? Let's get back in the car. The engine's working, the tires are good, there's plenty of gas. You keep driving. And instead of just enjoying the drive, pointing out the lovely view that you're passing, having good conversation with your with your uh, car partners, whoever they are, right? You're constantly just frustrated that you're not where you're driving to. You're not at your destination. Maybe you should pull over again. Check the air in the tires. Maybe that's a problem for why you're not there yet. Maybe, you know, something's wrong with the engine. Check that again. And the whole time you're driving, let's keep complaining that we're not actually at the destination. <sighs> That is the mistake I've been making while trying to become self-employed. Being frustrated with not getting there fast enough. I am making all kinds of things. And that first thing that I'm making might not be a hit. It might not go anywhere. It might make zero money. And that doesn't matter because I'm going to learn from that. I'm going to tweak that. Maybe that'll work out. Maybe it won't, but there's definitely pieces from it, whether it's just the learning that was put into it to build it or pieces of the project that you can then pour into other things. That'll be fine. But <laughs> constantly complaining that I'm not far enough yet or I'm not yet self-employed or <laughs> things aren't good enough because I still have to report my time and go to a job, a job that has been really good to me and my family, that in no way is negative. Nothing bad is happening. I'm just kind of fed up with the whole system of having to ask for time off or ask to work from a specific location or ask, like, I don't feel in control of my whole life. Okay, well, welcome to being an adult. What are you going to do about it? Oh, you're, you're doing the thing already? You're trying to build a company that you run and... Uh, what else do you want? You're driving on the freeway. You're heading there now. And the whole time you're complaining, you're just pissing off your passengers. You're just ruining the quality of life of everyone around you. That is the trap that I've fallen into. And I had a wonderful conversation with my wife this weekend. She pointed this out, that it makes me miserable. I'm never happy with the little bit of work that I'm doing, even if it's a lot of bit of work. It's not enough because I'm not there yet. And that added stress kills creativity in me. It kills any kind of satisfaction that I'm having with the learning and growth that I'm making, with the, the progress in what I'm building. It completely puts a, a, a negative spot on my marriage because her partner is never satisfied, never happy, never just like, you know what? Life is pretty good. It's going to be a great day. No, I'm just driving a wedge between myself and my best friend, my partner, my wife, my, my partner on this life together. Every day I'm with this person and every day I'm just frustrated that we're still driving on the freeway. <laughs> what kind of life is that? And, and she brought this to my attention. She was very kind about it. It was, it was a great conversation because I woke up today. I wasn't frustrated. I wasn't angry or sad or impatient, I guess would be the right word. I just was ready for the day. Everything I've got to do for my um, employee job, I'm just, I'm just doing it. And I'm not frustrated that I have to be an employee. Everything I'm working on, I, right now I'm trying to solve this bug in the program I'm building. It, it's fun because I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to learn from that and I'll get one step closer to releasing lukesfacebook.com, whatever the thing is that I'm making, right? Um, <laughs> it's it's eye-opening, 
after this weekend's conversation that I'm, I'm robbing myself of joy and I'm robbing the joy of the people around me. I'm not building a strong marriage. I'm not helping my partner to grow or thrive or enjoy parts of life. It's always not enough. It's always tainted by this, there's gotta be more. It's, it's gotta be better. The things that are good now are not good enough. And I don't want that in my life. Because eventually the passengers in the car, they're just gonna get out of the car. They're gonna make you stop, they're gonna leave. Because <laughs> they can't drive around with someone who's constantly complaining about not being at the destination and stopping every half an hour to figure out like, why are we not getting there faster? Well, because you're stopping driving. Because the, the whole time you're just complaining. You're not enjoying the ride. And I see that in these relationships that are closest to me. I'm pushing my wife away. I'm pushing my kids away. They're young. They're toddlers. They may not feel like I'm pushing them away, but in another 20 years, they're going to look back and be like, Dad, I, I never really liked hanging out with you because you were always distracted. You were always off in your own mind, thinking of something else, never spending the time with us, never just satisfied with throwing a ball around because you wanted to be in your office building lukesfacebook.com, right? Wow. Um, that's a huge eye-opener for me. I thought I was being like a hustler. <laughs> you know, you got to go, got to put the effort in every day, grind a little bit out. Yes, there's, that's important. That's, that's a good thing to push yourself to achieve things, to put in that little bit of work every day or the lot of it. It doesn't matter. But the mindset becomes toxic when you don't let yourself feel that victory. When you don't acknowledge that what you just did was great. You're still driving forward. You still went a few miles down the road. You, you took some steps and made some progress and you're that much closer to achieving that self-employment dream. Awesome. Now, go play catch with your kids. Because I'm going to miss all that. I'm going to miss raising my kids because I'm thinking about, oh, I got to make a business. And I'm going to push my wife away and our marriage will end. And that will be bad on many different levels. <laughs> but uh, it, relates, it relates to the kids as well. So if I mess up as a parent, I will leave the world a worse place than I found it. I'm not saying like being a good parent, I'll make the world better, but you will make the world a better place by raising good people. Okay. If you mess that up, you've added people to the world who suck. Don't, don't do that. Be a good parent, be there for them. Try to instill them with a, with good senses of kindness and responsibility to, <laughs> to care for their fellow human being, to care for themselves, to make the world a little bit better than they found it. And I'm not going to do that if I'm constantly just like, oh, dad's got a code. Dad, dad's got to go figure out marketing. Dad's, dad, what is this cloud architecture stuff? I, I got to do that instead of teaching you to read. Instead of listening to your three-year-old ideas. <laughs> instead of enjoying date nights with my wife. See, if I mess up the marriage and she leaves, that messes up the kids too. Because statistically, divorces, breakups and whatnot can really mess with the psyche of kids. It, it doesn't look good when you look at the studies. So it's very important that the marriage works out, that I'm there for the kids. Or I might as well just walk around littering and like punching old people and stuff. Like what? You just, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if, if lukesfacebook.com is the best site, service, whatever in the whole world. Like, oh, Luke, you made it. You're a quadrillionaire. Way to go. Yeah, but you're going to die alone and the world is way worse off because your, your kids are basically setting fires everywhere. <laughs> and, and on top of that, you know, all that aside, what kind of life did you live? Did you enjoy the time that you were actually building the company? Did you enjoy yourself? Did you wake up happy? Did you go to sleep content? Did you sleep well? Are you having nightmares all the time? 
Are you actually enjoying going out with your wife? You know how fun dates are? Dates are awesome, okay? You're with someone who wants to be with you, experiencing something new. You get to go eat some food, you get to go dancing, you get to go see something, you know what I mean? Like go on a hike, see some nature. Awesome. You don't want any of that? You just want to be miserable all the time because you haven't actually arrived at your destination yet? And I know in the next, let's just say two decades, poop is going to hit the fan. Bad things are going to happen. Countries are going to fall apart. Wars are going to happen. Famine, disease, tornadoes. All that. I get it. That company you're building isn't going to solve any of that. It'll probably collapse during all of that. It... <laughs> I'm so glad. So glad I made that company and we're all starving. Like, what do you... The priorities are just off. Okay? <laughs> if you're not enjoying the time now, if you're not proud of yourself and taking the time to appreciate those who are along the journey with you, the people who are sitting in the car as you're driving, you're missing out on so much. And if you're actively ruining their experience by just being in a bad mood, have you ever sat in the car with someone who's just pissed off? Who's, who's constantly dissatisfied with what's going on with the drive, with other drivers on the road, with anything. Just be around someone in a bad mood. It sucks. You, by being in that bad mood all the time, you're robbing those people of a chance for joy, for to enjoy life the way that you aren't. And I don't want to live like that. I don't want to... I don't want to sacrifice my marriage or the well-being and the life quality of my children on the altar of success. <laughs> because what kind of success is that? What do you... No, 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 no. So I've, I've been reassessing over the past 48 hours since this conversation. I've been thinking about how do I conduct myself? How do I feel when I actually do patch some software and it works and I squash that bug and I get one step closer to being self-employed. Do you actually acknowledge that and pat yourself on the back and feel good? Or do you look out at the road and go, hi, ah, yep, but there's still a few thousand miles to drive before we've actually made it. Because frankly, I don't think that uh, the latter situation, I don't think that's sustainable and I, I don't think it's gonna work out. I don't think any business will be launched, and if it does, it'll be a huge disappointment. And eventually you're just going to have a hemorrhage and bleed from the ears, and it'll all go down the toilet anyway. So, my challenge to myself this week is to just live in that gratitude space, to feel grateful for what I'm actually doing, to feel grateful for those moments that aren't work, rather than being frustrated that I, I have to go do this instead of working on the thing that I want to do. I'm already doing the thing I want to do. And those things that I'm doing that are taking me away from the thing I want to do are also things I want to do. I want a marriage. I want kids. I like being employed right now because it's one of my only streams of income. So you should, you should probably make sure that stays there while you're doing all this. <laughs> so learn to enjoy it. <laughs> learn, find the good things in it and feel grateful for that too. It's, um, it was really eye-opening because I've been metaphorically, emotionally just, just punching my wife because she always sees me beat down, frustrated, unsatisfied, dissatisfied. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to fall into that trap. Like, it's not fast enough. I don't have what I want now. I, I want to be grateful for what I have because I'm incredibly blessed you know how, dear God, do I have it easy, okay? Uh, I hope that whatever you're working on, just feel grateful that you get to work on it. I hope wherever you're at, you can find some, some beautiful things in your life to feel happy about, to feel contentment, to slow down and go, hey, it's working. Everything's going to be fine. Take a deep breath and be happy for where you are. 
because I honestly don't believe the universe is going to give you anything else if you're not grateful for what you have now. It's not, it's not going to work out. Even if you were to have it, you wouldn't feel good. You'd still be frustrated. You'd still be stuck. You'd still feel like you hadn't quite made it to your destination. And one day you're going to be on your deathbed. And you're not going to feel anything good. And I don't want that for myself. I don't want that for my family. I want to live a better life and not fall into that trap of rush to it and not be happy with where I'm at now. So that's what I'm working on this week. And I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself.